And now, Maine Web News. Welcome to the Pine State Debate on Maine Web News. Today's topic we're going to be discussing is the idea of non-citizens and non-residents being eligible to receive social services from the state of Maine. And joining me for this conversation is Beverly Cooper, who recently came on and ran as an independent candidate for governor. And I understand you also have a literacy program that you run. Literacy uh, for children and adults and the youth to youth. Uh, the, the literacy program is kind of really geared towards um, adults who maybe feel a little ashamed about not gotcha. knowing how to read. And we Great. just kind of want to make them feel like it's okay, we're here for you. Right. Mm -hmm. And also joining us is Eric Bennett. And Eric is the social media and networking strategist for Paul LePage's campaign. Yeah, new media social networking strategy. And also in the past, you've worked as a political advisor for Republicans, Democrats, and Greens, as I understand. Yeah, I like to support the person that I think will do the best job. Excellent. And he's also a frequent contributor to Maine Web News and hosts The Pulse of Maine with Eric Bennett. All right, so first thing I wanted to start off, you know, whether or not a person believes that a non-resident should or should not receive social services from the state, the way it was done was John Baldacci allowed that to happen by an executive order. Do we think that it was appropriate for him to do that without consulting the people or the legislature and just kind of taking it on his own? I think one of the questions that I would per probably ask first is, uh, first of all, what was the undercurrent behind his decision? Uh, what was the cause of his decision? That would be the first question that I would ask. And then should he have gotten permission from the legislature? Again, what were the basis for that decision? And after he made the decision, has it hurt our economy? Has it helped our economy? Or what is it doing to our economy? So those are a couple of questions that need to be asked. Fair questions. Mm -hmm. Eric? Yeah, what uh, Governor Baldacci did was a, a clear and total abuse of power. By issuing an executive order such as that, which uh, forbids the largest department in state bureaucracy and the most expensive from being able to question people's citizen status, uh, open the gates to not only increase the welfare roles and basically enslave a number of people to uh, being part of a state system, but it also uh, led to where we're at today. Now, because that order had to be rescinded, because it did not go through the proper channels, such as the legislature, all of those people that had come here and are receiving assistance are going to be jeopardized. You know, what is their future going to hold? You know, what's in it for them? They're clearly going to have to leave. So Baldacci, Governor Baldacci's decision um, not only inadvertently affected so many people in a negative way uh, and clearly was out of line, but it, it was completely and totally appropriate uh, for Governor LePage to rescind that order. Because if Governor LePage had not stopped that in its tracks, then it would have become exponential and led to an increasingly worse problem. So the, the meat of the matter is, at the end of the day, we have to decide, do we want to allow non-citizens and non-residents to be able to receive social services? Okay, Jerry, so what is it? Is it non-citizens or non-residents? Because we know that immigrants at this particular time would not be considered, um, they would be considered n not legal in the sense of them being immigrants, but they would be considered residents. Correct. So if they are residents, that means that most of them probably have jobs. Some of them have jobs. Not necessarily. Some of See, them. When you think of some residency. of them, Eric. No, not 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 a substantial. Because a resident, you know, you can take a kid that comes over here from uh, Timbuktu and he goes to college and he's a resident on the dorm. Doesn't make him a citizen. Doesn't make him a uh, you know legal. You know, he's a resident at a dormitory. It doesn't give him the right to get social aid. It doesn't give him the right to vote. It doesn't. Then he's not illegal either if he's a, if he's here. Right. He's I mean, here as a guest. And right. He should solely be. I guess. Let's okay. back it up one no, step. Okay, what about I love, a non-resident? I love, I love Eric's play on words. Let's use that word guest. All right. So here's, let's just, here, here it is. I call your country and I say, oh my goodness, we heard that there's war in your country and they're pillaging your villages and they're burning you all up and you have no place to go and you're living in tents. So we are going to invite you to come to Maine. Did we not do that in a roundabout way? That's just that. a moment. Then we say, come over to Maine, we'll help you. The challenge that came into play, and, and I'm not going to have all the facts on that one, but the challenge that comes into play is we invite the people to come, because we also get federal dollars for that. 
We invite them to come and we feed them. We don't teach them how to fish. So we have then made them codependent on our system. So we are probably to blame for that as well. No, you're wrong. Eric. Because it's not we. We didn't. The legislature didn't. The people didn't. Governor Baldacci did. One man brought all of this on. And he did it for an agenda. The only reason that the Democratic Party in the state of Maine needs to bolster their ranks is because they're losing a great deal of power politically because people are uh, obviously catching on to what's happening and that the state government is not the answer to everything. And so, I don't agree. Well, you can you choose not to agree, but like you just said, you don't know the facts. The facts of the matter are, in the last four years, 10% of the population has increased due to the number of non-citizens coming here for the sake of state benefits. Those are benefits that residents and citizens and Americans are paying in for their own, for our own, for we the people's own. And Eric, what about the people that are here that are immigrants, that are working, and perhaps you're talking about some of their family members, but that are working are, and are being taxed as well? I'm not saying I'm for it or against, but I'm just, well, if they work at a McDonald's, they're getting taxed. If they're working at the main medical, they're getting taxed. Yeah. Income tax is wrong. We've got to do away with the income tax. Okay, but what about those people who are paying into the system via their tax? And they're not. Beverly, yes, Beverly. Eric. taxation is not the ideal you want to use to base people's rights upon. Okay, citizenship is the ideal you use to base rights upon. The state of Maine is going to tax everybody and their brother. They're gonna, they don't care who you are. Well, They're going to If the truth be told, my goodness, all of us are illegal immigrants except for the Indians. We're not illegal immigrants. There's no, this protocol you have to go through. You actually both make good points, but let's back it up one moment. Let's talk about a non-resident. And this doesn't necessarily mean an immigrant. Because somebody true. could come from New Hampshire or a place where you know it's tough mm -hmm. to get social mm -hmm. services. Should a non-resident of Maine be able to go into DHHS and ask for and receive benefits? I, I don't think that it should be... Uh, like a full-blown assistance. I think that if they are in need of emergency assistance, maybe it should be like a rule to it. Because are we are brothers keepers, and that is one of my things that I believe in. Yes, we are. I don't think that we should uh, enable a person to where they're dependent on the government. I totally agree with Eric. That's not the solution. But I think that if a person is in need of help and we're trying to give them a hand up, which is also what LePage has stated. Right, a he says a up, hand up, not a hand out. Not a hand out, then that's times. a different story. No, I don't believe that we should be responsible for people who come in from other states because it is a cushy place and then they can receive all the benefits. No, I'm not for that. So I do totally agree with Eric on that point. But I think that there's a responsibility as human beings that we should try to assist people who are trying to, to better their lives. Beverly, if we're going to be our brother's keeper, yes. that means that you do it out of your pocket. You do not pass the buck to a corrupt government under the sake and the guise of caring and feeling you want to do good for your neighbor uh, using that phrase because that's the number one way that things lead to abuses. You don't do that. If you want to be your brother's keeper, you do it out of your own Eric, pocket. Can you tell I, me where you, I want to know where you get your stats from because here's something that I'm learning and it's no disrespect to you. And everybody knows I love LePage so it's no disrespect to him. But I'm learning that over the years, we as Americans we as Americans, I'm not pinpointing any certain group, we just buy into whatever the media says, whatever our government says, we don't travel enough, we don't do enough research for ourselves to look at stats and say, we don't question things. So then when someone brings like this to our attention, we say, oh my goodness, is that right? And then we just believe it 100%. The way that you want to begin investigating that, Beverly, and if, especially if you're going to run Have you public, investigated yes, it? If you're That's run, my question. Yes, if you're going to it's run for public you. office. Have you investigated Yes, I have. It, That's what I do. If where you're did gonna, you get... If Please, you want to run for public office, from? Beverly, what you'll want to do is go to the State of Maine website, go to the Department of Health and Human Services, and pull up every single expenditure that they have online because well, it's available. interesting and all enough because I did call the Human Services this morning, Eric. No, Beverly, there's a difference between doing it yourself and asking somebody else to do it for you. Like I said, go to the State of Maine website. Go to the Department of Health and Human Services. It's all right there. And anyone can I do that at home. I did contact, so as he's asking me... It leads to a big question, though, which yes. is, can the state of Maine afford to be a sanctuary state, quote-unquote? Can the state of Maine afford, but putting out the moral or political aspects of it, can the state of Maine afford to pay social services benefits, food assistance, or Medicaid to folks who move here from another state or another country? 
I think if we invited them from another country, it's our responsibility. Now, if they're coming from another state, again, just for a safe haven, because it's easier than I think a one or two time help, that's it. I think there should be a, 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 a law in place that says, you know what, we may assist you on a one time basis in case of an emergency, but just for them to come, because it is a haven, no, I don't agree with that. Well, I want to wrap it up, but I'm going to give you the last word, Eric. What do we offer to people who have come here, and they were invited to Baldacci for all intents and purposes, you know, to well, come the, here, well, what are their Baldacci, options? What the Governor Baldacci, what Governor Baldacci did clearly is wrong, and it's unfortunate that those people were placed in that scenario. It was an abuse of power, and, and so, you know, what's going to happen is those people are going to have to go to the Department of Health and Human Services and be asked if they're here legally or if they're a citizen. If they are not, they will have to do like that young couple just did and go to Massachusetts because she is here illegally from Mexico and they came here to have a kid and, and uh, so that's why they came here to have a kid. So they're going to have to do that. Now as far as you know, saying we, we invite them here, we did not invite them here. Governor John Baldacci did this. But He's we voted him into office. There's a big right. difference, Beverly, between people voting and going From the perspective of the people that came, though, mm -hmm. and who may have been, had trouble and may have been desperate, they were led to believe That's that they were going to be welcome is. Here. What welfare is, is a safety net for our most vulnerable citizens right. to get temporary assistance until they get on their feet. What happens is when you start increasing the number of people on welfare who do not ever come off of it, and you compare that on a scale with the number of businesses that are paying into that, then it's going to get lopsided. And it's not going to be in favor of the businesses. And unfortunately, businesses and people's hard work is what takes care of all of this. So why don't we do this then? Those people that are receiving that assistance, why don't we put them to work in those businesses? And they can work for their pay. Well, you both have great ideas. I think we're out of time. If someone wants to hear more of your views, or what is your website for your literacy project? It is www.ilovetoread at homestead.homestead.com. And the other one is www.youth2youth.homestead.com. Thank you. And Eric, if someone wants to hear more of your news and views, where can they get Yeah, get a hold of me. I'm accessible 24-7 on Facebook. Um, you know, again, my name will appear in the credits. Just type that in and uh, look forward to hearing from you. I love talking to all different kinds of people. And before we leave, can I say something to Eric? I thought his, his strategy for LaPage's campaign was brilliant, and I just wanted to tell you that. Well, thank you, Pamela. You're welcome. Got results at the end of the day. Thank you, folks, and we'll see you next time on Pine State Debate. Today's episode of Maine Web News is brought to you by Niffin's Specialty Meat. Stop and see them today at 388 on the Lakewood Road in Skowhegan.